God gives righteousness. You can't earn it. Please don't think following the law will allow you to earn it. That's what Paul is saying there. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. Because you're working. So there's no grace in that. Because you're putting in work and your work ain't good enough. So the more you work, the more you're submitted to the law, the more the law exposes the sin, and the more debt is accrued as a result of it. That's what Paul is saying there. But then who does not work, but believes on him who is justified, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness over and over again. He's saying it over again. Faith is accounted for righteousness. Faith, y'all, not works. Not any Bible verse. Faith, just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom imputes right to whom God imputes righteousness. Again, by what? By faith. He then quotes um, David in um, um, in Psalm, I believe it was Psalm. Yeah, in Psalm thirty-two, he says, "Blessed are those." whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. It is God that determines these things, not us. God determines what makes one righteous and what doesn't. It is all on God. It is all determined by God. And what he's saying here is that justification, the justification that we all pursue after, is not going to be by any kind of compliance and obedience to the laws of God. Sorry, to the laws in the Bible, but to a different law. And so Abraham, then he goes on to tell them that Abraham is justified. He was justified before there was a law. He was justified before he was circumcised. So the circumcision didn't justify him either. So while he was uncircumcised, he had received uh, justification. Justification is literally just to be declared righteous. One way to remember justification is to say, just as if I never did it. To be justified is to say, is to, is for God to look at you as if you never did whatever it is that you did. That was an infraction against him. I know that's an oversimplification, but it's enough for what we do here and what we talk about here. Justification is just as if I never did it. And we are justified before God. God gets to determine that. And some of us believe somehow following the rules will justify us. No, none of those things will justify us. The Jews thought getting circumcised justified them. It made them righteous, being that they were under the law. Paul saying, no, being under the law just exposed the sin in your heart. It doesn't justify you. And so while he's uncircumcised, he was justified. So then how do we receive the promise of God? He says, for the promise that would be, verse 13, the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through righteousness of faith. That's how we actually receive righteousness from God is by Faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void. So if it has to do with any of your work, your faith is made void. It's either faith or none of it. It's either all faith or none of it. It can't be some faith and some works. It can't be, I'm going to put a little bit of faith in here and a little bit of work. So that way, you know, balance it out. No, it's all faith, no works. It's all faith, no circumcision. It's all faith, no following the rules. That's not what justifies you. For if those who are the law are heirs, faith has been made void and the promise made of no effect because the law brings about wrath. And for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Simple speak, faith and law are like oil and water. They do not mix. And the only way you can keep them together is to continue to shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. it. But they never actually mix. They never become one. And what he's saying is that faith and works do not mix. 
It's either all faith or all works, but it can't be both. And he already went through his dissertation about how works doesn't even do it. So therefore, works is not effective. It's all faith. <sighs> therefore, if it is a faith that it might be according to grace, verse 16, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only those who are of the law, those who are of the law are the Jews. Okay, you can write that note down there. Those who are of the law are the Jews, but also to those who are of the faith, which are those who are not Jew, who is the father of us all, as it is written. So Abraham is the father of the Jews through the law. But Abraham is also the fathers of those who are of faith. Why? As Paul says in verse 17, I have made you the father of many nations. And in the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. What am I saying to you, family, today? What I'm saying to you is, is that your works doesn't work. That's going to be the name of this episode. When I put this on Patreon, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to call it. Works don't work. <laughs> Your works don't work. They never did. They never will. They didn't work for the Jews to change their heart and they won't work for you. So stop trying to impose rules on people because works don't work. Stop trying to tell people to, to follow the Bible because it's not going to change anybody's heart. Stop telling people, you know, do this and don't do that. Because if you don't do this or you don't do that or you do this or you don't do that, then, you know, you'll go to heaven or you'll go to hell. None of that will change a heart. If your heart is going to change, it's going to require the Holy Spirit. It's going to require the grace of God. It's going to require God to do something new in your heart. And too many of us have not asked for the help of the Holy Spirit to truly convict the heart of those who actually need to hear the gospel and can be transformed by it. As long as you keep preaching works, you are preaching slavery. As long as you keep preaching works, you are preaching bondage. As long as you keep preaching works, you are preaching death white washed tombs so faith don't work sorry works don't work but faith counts as righteousness the righteousness that is imputed to be imputed is, really, is literally to be placed on to get a tag to be stamped to get the stamp all you have to do is believe All you have to do is believe, not believe and do something. No, believe, not believe in. No, believe. So today, let's be justified by faith, not by works. I'll say one last thing and then we'll go. See, I behaved a little bit better today. I'm sorry, I went a little over, but you know, I'm getting better at this, okay? I remember I spoke to a couple. Um, we were doing, I was doing premarital counseling for them. I asked them a question. I said, how do you know you're saved? And the young lady said to me, well, because, you know, I read my Bible every day and I do my best to follow what the Bible says. Sometimes I mess up, but I do the best I can. I said, okay. And you, sir, how do you know you're being saved? And he told me, man, listen, I've, I've, I'm a better person today than I was uh, years ago. I go to church every Sunday. We, you know, we pray together. And so because of that, I said, so you believe you're saved because of those things? Like, yeah, you know, that's how we know we're saved. I mean, none of those things will save you. If you believe you're saved because you're doing your best to do what the Bible says, it won't save you. If you think it's, you're going to be saved because you go to church on Sunday, every Sunday, none of that will save you. You can only be saved by the grace of God through faith. There's not a single thing you can do to save you. So fam, what you need to do is to believe more, to trust more. If he is going to be your savior, he has to be your Lord. So allow him to be Lord over your life. Stop trying and then becoming your own Lord and your own God over the law. You can't be justified by your works. Works don't work.
Works don't work, fam. So today, let's trust in him. Let's believe on him. And we will be saved. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord, knowing, Father, without you, we cannot do a single thing. Father, we come before you today, Lord, believing and trusting in you, in your grace, in your mercy towards us. Today, Lord God, I ask for every person here who is being challenged in their faith. Father, may we rely on you today in all things. Lord, develop us. Grow us in your faith. Father, let your spirit continue to cultivate in us, Lord, an awareness of who you are, your goodness and your mercy towards us. May we be drawn closer to you, depending on you, trusting in you. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless each and every one of you. I will see you guys on Monday. We'll have a meditation. And again, we'll have the read and rain on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I want to encourage you to go on patreon.com slash Isaac Frere. Become a patron. Support what we do here. Your support is what makes all this possible. And I'll post this video on Patreon. It's a bonus, really, for those of you who support. For those of you who are here, the reason why we can come live and do this in the mornings is because of the support of the patrons. So I'm so encouraged by you all. I'm grateful for you all. I will post this and make this available to you all. I'm also going to start posting maybe one or two of these a week on uh, on IG for the subscribers as well, just for your support. It's extra work, but I want to do it. I know we, I know what we do here is free. We're here live. We're doing this for free. Okay. But I do want to give a bonus to those who support and make this possible because without their support, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be able to do this the way that we do it. So I want to say thank you to all of you who support. And also, if you're not ready to support, maybe you can't yet, but you want to plug in with our community, join our Discord community, discord.gg slash Opus Frere, discord.gg slash Opus Frere. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. We're going to spend some time in prayer. I'll be live again, same time. And then afterwards, we're going to, you know, I, I, we're going to move over to Discord where you can share in your prayer requests. And um, and uh, and I want to spend some time just praying for each and every one of you. So I will see you guys. I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. All right. God bless you guys.